This is lesson 91, number 18, and I'm supposed to solve. Um, I think it's going to be a quadratic, and I think I can, I think if I trade that out for 1 minus cosine squared x, I think I can do that. See, like 1 minus, if I brought the cosine squared x to the other side, that's sine squared x. Um, then I'll have all in one, like I won't have sines and cosines together, right? So this is one. These are y's though, aren't they? Hmm. They're probably going to turn into x's by the end on mine. <laughs> one minus cosine squared y minus nine cosine. That's really, really bugging me having the y's in there. Equals zero. And then, so I'm hoping for a diamond problem. You know, just a quadratic that I can. That bad you can um, temporarily um, I know. Well, I probably naturally will because my my little pen is going to write it anyway, even if I don't want it to. <laughs> my and I keep saying cosine squared x. Okay, so I, don't let me mess this up though. Nine cosine y plus three. Okay, so the 2 and the 3 can give me a 5, but then I have negative 2 cosine squared y minus 9 cosine y plus 5 equals 0. I don't like it. I don't like the negative in front of my lead coefficient, so I'm going to multiply through by negative 1. I can multiply each term by negative 1 if I want to, and I do. As long as I don't mess everything up by forgetting to do it to one of them. Minus 5 equals 0. 0 times negative 1 is 0, so I'm actually allowed to do that. Now I'm going to do a diamond problem. I'm, well, I'm hoping for that. I hope I don't have to like bust out the quadratic formula or something. So I'm trying to find something that multiplies to make negative 10. See, I, I took the 2 and the 5, the 2 and the negative 5, and that's what it has to multiply to. And then positive 9, and now I'm thinking 10 times 1, um, 10 times negative 1, right? Now, I can't just put cosine y plus 10 and cosine y minus 1 because it's, there's that 2, that coefficient right there. So I have to get out this. We're doing it the long way because that 2 that's in front of my squared term. So this goes on in this box right here. I, it almost turned into an x. It tried. And the minus 5, it tried but I stopped it. Now the two numbers that I found go in these two side boxes. It doesn't matter where, which one I put where. I'll put the 10. Oh! Plus 10, right? And then the minus. Um, and then I know that cosine y times cosine y is going to give me the y squared, but where should I put the 2 on the top or the side? Yeah, on the side, because if I put it up there, then something times 2 has to equal that, and that, that doesn't have a 2 in it. So this one will work. Put it right there. And then I can go, oh, well, 2 times 5 is 10. It looks so weird. It says cozy. It says cozy. Oh, oh, that's cute. Wait, cozy have a z in it. Anyway, that's negative one. Minus one, and then cosine y. Cosine y plus five. All that's equal to zero. And then zero product property. I can set them each equal to zero. This will give me one half. This will give me negative five. We're going to throw that one away. Okay, you can't have cosine. There's no angle that's going to give you a cosine greater than um, the absolute value of one, right? It's going to always be between negative one and positive one. So this one will work though. So then we just go in our unit circle, find out where cosine, which angles give us a positive um, half. 
So it looks like 60 degrees. And probably, where else would I have a positive half? 300. I don't know, I think I'm done. I'll check it. See if it's good. Yep, it's good.